Hello world, in today's video, we'll explore the basic working principle of DRAM using a simple circuit that I'll set up on this breadboard. But before we begin, I want to thank this user for their generous super thanks contribution in my last video. If you are also interested in supporting the channel, then consider sending a super thanks as it will allow me to create more amazing content for this channel. Okay, now let's see what have I got here. I have set up a very simple circuit here. There is a button which is connected to an LED. Thus, the LED lights up whenever the button is pressed and goes off when it is released. But this is not a DRAM circuit yet. We need to tweak it a little bit by adding a capacitor. So this is the modified circuit. The button in this case is acting like the access transistor of the DRAM cell. Then we have a capacitor, which in this case is connected in parallel with an LED and its current limiting resistor. If you're interested in learning more about current limiting resistors and what happens if we don't use them with LEDs, then you can check out this video on my channel. The link is in the comments or description. By the way, the DRAM cell does not have an LED but we are using it here as it serves the purpose of an indicator, which means it gives us a visual representation of the charge on our capacitor. So that's our setup. I'm using a 100 microfarad capacitor. Now without the capacitor, the LED switches off immediately after I release the button. But after adding a 100 microfarad capacitor, notice how the light goes off a bit more gradually. That's because the capacitor gets charged during each button press and provides this stored charge to the LED once the button is released. So that's how the LED is representing the charge on the capacitor. Now let's increase the capacitance. In this case, I have connected 400 microfarad capacitors in parallel. So the total capacitance now is 400 microfarads. Now let's press the button again. So here you can notice that the light goes off even more slowly than it did with just 100 microfarads. Now, if I keep on pressing the button, then as you can see, I can keep the LED on for more time. So this is what happens in our DRAM. The access transistor allows the capacitor to get charged, but the capacitor starts discharging after some time as it cannot hold the charge forever. So the charge is refreshed after every 64 milliseconds, right? So here we are trying to imitate that by pressing the button continuously so that the charge gets refreshed and due to this, our LED, which represents the charge on the capacitor, remains on until we stop pressing the button continuously. Or to put it simply, the capacitor retains its charge as long as it is periodically refreshed. Now, LED lights up only if the input voltage is beyond its threshold voltage. And the moment the capacitor voltage falls below this threshold value, we won't be able to see any light. So if you want to observe this voltage drop continuously, then for that, you'll have to replace this LED with a multimeter. So here I have connected a multimeter. Now let's press the button once again. As you can see, there is an increase in the voltage value, which means capacitors got charged. And now it is slowly getting discharged. Now let's press the button continuously. And as you can see, we are able to stay at the same voltage level if we refresh the circuit continuously. And if I don't press the button, then the capacitors keep on getting discharged. So with the multimeter, you can see the complete decline in voltage, which we were not able to see with the LED. Anyway, the point is, this is how a DRAM cell works. And this simple demonstration offers a clear insight into its functionality. So go give it a shot yourself. Remember that learning isn't just about collecting information and writing answers in your exams. So try out this fun experiment on your own. That way, you won't even have to memorize what a DRAM cell looks like and why it needs refreshing. You will see it firsthand. By the way, there's no one pressing the button continuously inside your computer. A much sophisticated piece of hardware takes care of the refresh process. Also, the actual DRAM cell uses very small capacitors, typically of the order of a few femtofarads, which is 10 to the power of minus 15 farads. And they are buried beneath the substrate surface and are known as trench capacitors. This trench structure, which occupies less space, allows for high packing densities of memory cells, 
enabling more memory to be integrated into a smaller area. Before we conclude, I'd like to pose a question. Have you ever wondered why DRAM, despite its need for constant refreshing, is still used extensively? To figure out why we continue to use it, and more importantly, where we use it and how is it different from SRAM, watch a video discussing the differences between DRAM and SRAM on this channel. The link is in the description. Like and share the video and send a super thanks if you found this video helpful.